Hello and welcome to TA Academy. In today's lecture, we'll be learning how to plot the magnitude and phase spectrum of a given time domain signal like the one we have here. So x of t is given as 1 plus sine omega 0 t plus 2 cosine omega 0 t plus cosine of 2 omega 0 t plus pi by 4. And we are interested in plotting the magnitude and the phase of this signal in the frequency domain. And for that we will take recourse to the Fourier series representation which we have looked at in detail in one of my previous lectures. So the Fourier series if you recall it says that assuming that x of t has a Fourier series it can be written as a summation of harmonically related complex exponential signals. So a k e to the power j k omega 0 t where k goes from minus infinity to infinity and here a of k is known as the Fourier coefficient and k represents the harmonics of the fundamental frequency omega 0. We also saw from one of my lectures on complex exponentials that the fundamental frequency omega 0 is related to the time period by this expression omega 0 is equal to 2 pi by t. So now looking at x of t again we see that it has the fundamental frequency omega 0 and there are two terms corresponding to omega 0 and there is one harmonic which is the second harmonic given as 2 omega 0 and the zeroth harmonic which is also known as the average value or the DC value we have it as 1. So we can write this expression for our particular problem as x of t is equal to summation where k goes from minus 2 to 2 a of k e to the power j k omega 0 t. Since a of k's are complex conjugates we have to take into account that it will start from minus 2 and go to 2. So if we can represent sines and cosines in terms of the complex exponential e to the power j omega 0 t then we can find out Fourier coefficients a k and then plot our magnitude and phase spectrum. So we will need so we will make use of two identities here which are that cosine omega 0 t can be written as e to the power j omega 0 t plus e to the power minus j omega 0 t divided by 2 and sine omega 0 t can be written as e to the power j omega 0 t minus e to the power minus j omega 0 t divided by 2j. So we will substitute cosine omega 0 t. So we will substitute this expression for cosine omega 0 t and this one for sine omega 0 t and then rearrange and combine the terms to calculate our Fourier coefficients a of k's. So let's start with it. So in place of sine omega 0 t I am substituting e to the power j omega 0 t minus e to the power minus j omega 0 t divided by 2 j then in place of cosine omega 0 t I will substitute e to the power j omega 0 t plus e to the power minus j omega 0 t divided by 2 and lastly 
in place of cosine 2 omega 0 t e to the power j 2 omega 0 t plus pi by 4 plus e to the power minus j 2 omega 0 t plus pi by 4 the whole thing divided by 2. Now let's combine the terms so we are interested in finding a0 which is the DC value and we already see that this one corresponds to a0 next we need all the terms which comes with the fundamental frequency omega 0 so I will write 1 plus e to the power j omega 0 t and combine all the terms so from this second term I will get 1 over 2 j and this 2 cancels and I will get another 1 from the third expression so we have found out the coefficient a1 so this is a1 corresponding to the fundamental frequency omega 0 now we also need to do it for e to the power minus j omega 0 t and knowing Fourier series we know that it will be a complex conjugate because for real valued signals the Fourier coefficients are complex conjugates but let's confirm it so I will get minus 1 over 2j from here so minus 1 over 2j and plus 1 from this third term so indeed these are complex conjugates so this one here is a minus 1 and lastly we need all the terms corresponding with the second harmonic e to the power j 2 omega 0 t so this can be written as e to the j 2 omega 0 t times e to the power j pi by 4 so this would be e j pi by 4 divided by 2 and uh, the complex conjugate e minus j 2 omega 0 t will be minus e to the power minus j pi by 4 divided by now let's write these Fourier coefficients once again so we have ascertained that the average value or the DC value is equal to 1 the Fourier coefficients for the fundamental frequency a1 and a minus 1 are equal to 1 plus half j and 1 minus half j and to calculate a2 and a minus 2 we will evaluate this expression e j pi by 4 can be written as cosine pi by 4 plus j sine pi by 4 from the Euler's identity and we know that cosine pi by 4 is given by 1 over square root 2 plus j sine pi by 4 is also equal to 1 over square root 2 so a2 which is given by e to the power j pi by 4 divided by 2 can be written as half times 1 over square root 2 plus j times 1 over square root 2 and this evaluates to square root 2 by 4 times 1 plus j and a minus 2 is the complex conjugate of this which evaluates to square root 2 by 4 times 1 minus j 
so next we are interested in finding out the magnitude and the phase spectrum of the Fourier coefficients so so the AK magnitude and AK phase so we can already say that AK is only exist we can already say that AKs are equal to zero for magnitude K greater than two since K already only ranges from minus two to two. Now let's go ahead and plot the magnitude and phase of A1, A0 and A2. So A0 is the simplest so it's just equal to 1 so magnitude A0 would then be equal to 1 and the phase of A0 would be equal to 0 which I have plotted here so this is AK magnitude versus K and this is phase AK versus K so for A0 the amplitude will be equal to 1 and the phase will be equal to 0. Let's go ahead and find out A1 magnitude and A1 phase. So we know that the magnitude of a complex number is given as square root of the real part which in our case is 1 plus the square of the imaginary part which is equal to half and this evaluates to square root of 5 over 2 which is the magnitude of A1 and please note here that the magnitude of A minus 1 will be equal because of this square because they are complex conjugates and therefore their magnitude will be same so this you can see is plotted here a1 has an amplitude of square root 5 by 2 which is slightly more than 1 and a minus 1 has also the same magnitude let's see how their phase comes out as 0.46 radian so for this we know that the phase of a1 is given by tan inverse of the imaginary part which is half divided by the real part which is 1 and tan inverse half is equal to 0.46 pi radians and notice here that for a minus 1 which is the complex conjugate it will be tan inverse minus half and therefore the phase will be reversed it will be minus 0.46 radians which you can see plotted here let's go to the harmonic number 2 the second harmonic and find out its magnitude and phase so let's evaluate the magnitude of a2 which would be equal to square root of the real part which is square root 2 by 4 square and the imaginary part is the same that will also be equal to square root 2 by 4 square this comes out as 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 square root which is 2 by 8 1 by 4 square root 2 so half and we know that uh, a minus 2 will also have the same magnitude as half so let's see the magnitude spectrum so there you can see a2 is half of a0 which is nicely plotted here and now let's evaluate the phase of a2 
so the phase of a2 is given as tan inverse b over a and since the imaginary and the real part are the same we'll have tan inverse of 1 which is equal to 0.78 pi radians and the phase of a minus 2 would be equal to minus 0.78 pi radians which you can see plotted here so another very interesting property can be readily observed from the magnitude spectrum and the phase spectrum therefore a real valued signal the magnitude spectrum is an even function while the phase spectrum is an odd function of k so that's it for today's lecture i hope it was useful to you and uh, stay tuned to my channel and i'll see you again in another lecture on signals and systems with another topic